Hi there, I'm back. This is Bar Pask in Ohio. I'm going to paint a dog for you today. This is a six by six inch stretch canvas and I'll show you the image. This is Willa Ray, isn't she beautiful? This is a neighbor that lives behind me. This is her dog. Got a couple other photos too. This is her when she had her pups, isn't that? Oh, I love that image too. But this is the one I chose and I cropped it square or approximately square. Um, it isn't exactly a commission. Um, she did reach out to me recently and said she lives on a little farmette here behind me. They have goats, they have chickens, um, I think there's some sheep there now. And anyway, she would like some paintings of her farm. And uh, so I'm painting Willa Ray. And uh, I'll show her to her when it's finished. And of course, you know, no obligation to take it. But And I figure when I'm not doing other things, I'll maybe next time I'll paint some chickens. So I, I'm welcome, of course, to go over and shoot my own reference photos. Um, this was one of, she does great photography too. And this, she said, use any of my photos you want. Um, so this is one, actually one of her photos. So we're starting like I always do and putting in my darkest darks. Sometimes I just block in the whole eye area dark. Usually I do. But her eyes are very light, so I'm, I'm going to try this way. And next little solvent in there, the solvent-free liquid. I went out and painted yesterday by myself in Lebanon, Ohio, just the most charming town north of me here. There's a lot of historic buildings there, and uh, I painted what I think it used to, yeah, it used to be an old gas station. It's by the train station, and uh, I tried it one time a long time ago and struggled with it. The building's unusual, so I thought I'm going to try it again, not to let it beat me, right? And I, you know, because I have, I feel like I've really slowed down on my drawing process, so. You know, I try not to dive in until I get what I want with my drawing. And uh, so it went pretty well. Still got a little bit of tweaking to do to it, but uh, went, went better this time. But it's just one of those towns that you could just paint endlessly. There's so many things to paint there. got an old historic hotel named called the Golden Lamb and uh, they've had lots of past presidents stay there. So we're just going like I always do after the darks first and hopefully this canvas will not fall off of here being a stretch canvas, you know, it's a little more difficult to hang. All right, do we see any others? There's a little bit of a dark here and a little bit here. That's too much. Wipe some of that back. A 
looking to make sure I got all the darks. I'll show you what I've done. See, look where all the darks are. So I've tried to place all the darks that I see approximately. Like I said, the eyes are kind of a burnt sienna kind of color. Usually I would just block in that whole area dark. All right, we have a white dog. Now I've got to, I can't just paint it white. I've got to think about this. I want to reserve, I want to squint and look where my very lightest areas are. It's very light through here. Here, we'll, I'll show it to you again. Between the eyes, on each side of the eye. So I've got to look for those lightest areas. It would be nice probably if she'd been outside in the sun even, give me more of a difference in values. So we're going to start out and put a big blob of white out. Some of the areas to me look a little bit yellow, you know, just a little and a little warmer. So let's mix a little yellow ochre into part of that white. See how that looks? That's not bad. And maybe a little bit of my transparent red oxide into a little bit, pull it a little warmer. I'm going to want to start with the darkest areas, even though nothing is very dark. You know, I'm going to, and again, I'm going to want to reserve some of this for the lightest parts. Um, yeah, I don't know if you paint animals, but to me the toughest ones are the ones that are solid white or solid black. And they're hard, a lot of times they're hard to photograph, especially black animals. So it can, it can be difficult. Yeah, there's nothing in all this light area that's very dark. There's some things that are just slightly darker. We'll do the best we can. I mean, if we get it wrong, we'll we'll scrape it off. All right, let's go with the darkest value I mixed up first, and we'll look for those areas. I like keeping the corner darker anyway. You know, it's our job, to, if you're an artist, to explain what you're seeing, even if you have to uh, change things up a little bit on your own. Sorry about the thumping, that's that canvas jumping around a little bit. The ear is kind of an unusual color. It's uh, kind of taupey brown and black, of course. I guess that's, no, it's a whole board shifting. Try to put my thumb on a little bit and see if I can stop that. I need more arms. I'm trying to <laughs> the camera is, you're set in between the image and the painting. So I'm leaning back and forth looking.
I think I'm even going to mix up a cool white. I put a little blue in this. Oops, I didn't get it mixed in there. Looking a little like rain here today. Friend and I were talking just a little bit ago, an artist friend, about how people always are interested in how long did it take you. I'm sure you get that question if you're an artist. It doesn't really mean much in my opinion. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, if you're faster or you're slower, I mean, you know, you're paying for a lot of things when you buy a painting. You're paying like we were talking about for all the years of that you've been doing it and I always say the important thing is the finished painting. Just jumping all around. We've got some baby groundhogs in our backyard. Three of them. Cutest things. One of them just came across our patio. Came up here to check things out. They're cute right now. I mean, we may have to start running them off because I don't want them being comfortable here. <clears throat> um, we used to have a deck on, now we have a patio, and uh, years past we have had groundhogs digging under our deck. You don't want that. Our neighbor needs a new shed. It's, it's pretty bad, and they are living under it. Feels a little more yellow to me up here.
too dark there. I noticed in all the pictures her little tongue is not, it goes over a tooth, I think. <clears throat> So it doesn't just lay flat out of her mouth. So we'll have to try to get that. Just jumping back and forth between puddles of uh, these different colors here. And like everything, this is more about value than it is about color. So <clears throat> sometimes I'll put blue and warm colors in pets that I don't necessarily see, but um, it makes it interesting, I think. Sorry, my husband's mowing out there, if you hear it. I just had a gentleman pick up a painting this morning, and uh, if you if you know who Edward Pothast is, he um, was a famous Cincinnati artist. He's been dead a long time. P o t t h a s t, I think it is Pothast. I love his work, and the Cincinnati Art Museum has some of his work. They had an exhibit a few years ago of a lot of his work and he's kind of known for um, more so I think for children on the beach does a lot of little um, kind of faceless children anyway this gentleman owns a podcast oh, my gosh I can't even imagine he said it's the most we ever pay for a painting I would expect so I can't even imagine I mean, just imagine owning a really, like a John Singer sergeant to have it. Oh my gosh. We'll want to pull out some little hairs when we uh, get the background painted in too. Because she's pretty fuzzy. This is a, um, a Great Pyrenee if you know what that is. Beautiful big dogs and uh, she's the watchdog over there because again they have goats and they have sheep and chickens and we have you know we have coyotes in this area and foxes and uh, so it's her job to guard the farm. They have a couple little inside dogs and uh, one night she let one of them out and came out and a coyote had in his mouth and she luckily they dropped the dog when she screamed um, I think there were a pack of them 
the dog survived, thank God. Um, you know, had a cone on its head and stuff and uh, neck injuries and it's scary. Yeah, if you live in this area and you have a little dog, you want to take it out. Somebody was telling me, someplace around here, um, these people had a good sized dog. I can't think what it was, a big dog, but it was on an, uh, you know, an electric fence and it uh, wouldn't take the hit and the coyotes got it. It's terrible. I said we'll have to run some little hairs off into the background when we get that in. You know, we'll get it covered and then we'll decide where we need to adjust values or maybe we'll want heavier paint. Let's see where this starts. It comes out way at the top of her ear. feel like um, this is too big here. Let me see. Let's move on to some other things. Um, the tongue, okay. I put out some crimson and I put some white in it. I'm gonna put a little cad red light in it and look at it th that way. That's a little better. 
warms it up a little bit. Slightly. Stay a bit darker up in there. Highlights are kind of what explains the, the nose. Let's look at those eyes. Like I said, they're kind of an unusual color. I think to me they look like I've got some transparent red. And then let's mix up a little orange. Just keep adjusting it back and forth. Does it need a little more yellow? A 
a really beautiful color. Let's try some of that and see what we think of that. Let's see what I see here. Switch brushes. This one's pretty gnarly. I am just hard on these little liner brushes anyway. much.
of times I just have to get away from these two and I'm sitting right in front of it. Sometimes it, it will even mean wiping an eye out. You know, you do what you have to do. Like right now I'm feeling like this eye may be a little, a little too far this way. You know, one nice thing is I started with a white canvas. Boor boards actually work better. Um, but let's try. Um, with a board, you can really scratch through to the white. Let's get some color on the background. Usually I just tell people that it's going to be a modeled background, but sometimes I do use the background color for inspiration that's there, you know. Um, right now what I see is kind of a nice brown color, so I think that's what we'll work with. She's pretty light, so I don't want to go too light on the background. we're going to have to pull little hairs all, all out from her head here when we get the background in. They're big dogs too. Um, hasn't happened in a long time but were a few occasions a few years ago where she got loose and got over this way and you know we called them to come get her and tried to kind of hold on to her but she intimidated me a little bit you know I think I had her collar and when she pulled her head I've you know a little scared of her not that she wasn't nice but she's big you saw the puppies weren't they adorable yeah, they had a male for a while. They had bred her, and uh, they don't have the male anymore. But I think she had like nine or ten puppies. I think, if I remember right. That's a lot of puppies at the nurse, isn't it? They got a wonderful, we're right here in the city and they've got a little farm back here. It's really great. They've got like nine acres. It's a lot for a city. Their son's going to get married here in the fall. So they've been working and working on the yard and planting trees and it's going to be right here behind us. Nice, nice people. They've uh, had community gardens there before. I guess you could call it community gardens where they garden with groups and I don't think for a few years so. But they've given us occasionally fresh eggs and, and some veggies and yeah, nice. 
and I don't grow anything. Tomatoes. <laughs> I get tomato plants. And even that makes you feel good to go out and pick a tomato, you know. Like, look what I did. Mm, I think that's pretty nice. Of course, we'll be doing, I do the edges <coughs> usually, even though it's not a deep canvas, because I think then that gives them the option to um, frame it or not. So I usually do the edges. Yeah, I still feel like that eye on the left needs to come in. Let me look at it. You know, with oils, because they're just wonderful, you know, you can take, you know, and lay on some heavy oils and get some texture in there. Just fun. bit here on the mouth and see what I can see.
working on my computer. What's new? Put some of those whiskers in. They didn't scratch in very well. All right, let me stand up and get away from this. And I've, I've been painting sitting down this time. Sometimes it's just it's comfortable. All right, let's I'm gonna move you over a minute too so I can look at it. I'm going to look at it a while. I think I think I still need to make a few subtle changes. Um, there it is right now. The things that I see, maybe I have to look very carefully, like at the spacing from the nose to the eye, and this spacing. I may have to do some subtle things yet. I have to look at, I feel like the nose could be out a little further here. Um, might have to move the eye in a little bit. So I will work at it till I get it right, but I just thought I'd start that with you and show you. But like again, sometimes I just have to set them down and walk away from them and look and look and compare it to the image. Um, so I think I, I think I have to do some subtle changes, and I'll tell you, you got to get the eyes right, and sometimes just the littlest change will just bring them in, and there they are. But the eyes are the biggest thing I think, and they have to be right. The placement has to be right. It has to, you know, that's what we look at, you know, are the eyes. So it has to feel like them. So, all right. I hope you enjoyed watching. I'm sorry I didn't completely. I think I may need to do a few little adjustments. So again, I just have to, I'm working with the camera between me and the image. I'm looking back and forth and back and forth. So makes it challenging, but again, I hope you enjoyed watching me get a good start on in there. Yep, I'll do a few little things yet. All right, you have a wonderful day and watch for me and like and subscribe please if you haven't done that and catch me next time. Bye-bye.